I'd like to talk about something very important to me and all of the old-time cowboys. It was really our common code of ethics. It was called the Code of the West. Code of the West is what folks have learned over the years how to get along with everybody else, other people in a community, as easily as possible. And there are certain things that you do or don't do, and that's expected of you in most societies. The Code of the West just happens to probably have dwelled on uh, some things like honesty, more so than perhaps other peoples in the world, at least my experience. The Code of the West is a set of rules that were set down way back when, when the ranches first started. It was pretty much every man for himself back then, and when a man tied up a piece of country and he hired a crew, he had to be able to depend on the crew. And there couldn't be a committee. Committees never work. So the Code of the West evolved through time of the hardships and the jobs and the different positions on a ranch. And what it meant was that things seemed to evolve just by working every day, as in riding horses and punching cows and gathering big country and making riding the long distances. All these different things came up to where instead of having arguments and fights and problems, there was just a code set up that everybody knew and it passed on word to mouth all over the country. What folks lived by before law took control out west, it, uh, it had its roots very early on. It was how people learned to get along with one another from the very earliest of times. In the bottom line, it's a set of rules to be able to show respect for each other and to accomplish a task that is phenomenal. The part of the Code of the West most meaningful to me and most any of the cowboys is being able to trust another fellow. Don't lie means you don't lie to your horse. In other words, you don't show up drunk and act like you're some kind of a hand and you climb on a horse and you're going to do something. That's lying. That, to me, is lying because it's not you. It's not telling the truth. Horses don't understand the smell of the difference between alcohol and uh, cigarettes and soccer games and disease. They don't get all that. All they understand is what the human presents to them, and they react. It's either fight or flight or resolve, they're fine with it. So when I say the word don't lie, it's not just you, it's your actions, how you treat your animals, how you treat your fellow human beings. And if that's all taken care of, it solves a whole lot of problems because anybody that's ever done it, and we're all guilty of it, you don't say the right thing and tell them how it really was and come back and get you later. The more you lie, the, the less you respect yourself. And you certainly don't like other people who lie to you and you find out about it well, you won't have much to do with them in the future. So truthfulness is probably, uh, if a man tells the truth, and of course doesn't steal, we don't like thieves either. But that's uh, the big part of the Code of the West. There's a lot of things that a man has to do 
to live according to the code of the West, but uh, lying and stealing is the two things you need to avoid. One of the things in the code of the West is that you don't touch another man's horse, his dog, his saddle, his rope, his truck. In other words, you leave his gear alone. What this does, it takes care of two things. One of them is, is that out of respect, you would never reach up and grab a man's rope. You would never grab his bridle. The other one is, is that nothing will ever end up missing that way. The cowboy had one tool that was most important, and that's his horse. His life depended on that horse. If a mad steer or a, or a mean old cow protecting her calf came after the cowboy, that horse better take that cowboy out of out of harm's way. Because the the saddle and the the riatas and the and the gear that we have is very personal. That's our office. You just don't walk into somebody else's office and sit down at their desk. You just wouldn't do that. Well, that's that's my office right there, so don't don't go near it. And there again, it comes right back to respect. If you never touch it, nothing will ever go wrong, so leave it alone. And I always tell people when they come around me, you don't touch a strange dog or a strange horse. Leave them alone. It's ethics. It's manners. You just don't do that. And then nothing will go wrong, so just leave it alone. And the grabbing a man's hat, that comes from the Saturday night deal of some dude getting fired up and he grabs a cowboy's hat because he wants to pretend he's a cowboy and he wants to put it on his head. Well, after the fight, it usually doesn't fit his head because it's pretty swelled up from getting thumped on. So you don't grab a man's hat. It's personal and it's the same as his saddle or anything else. So those are things you just don't do. Go to the West, there's an international law. In Spanish, it's called Caballo Primero, Vaquero Segundo. And that means horse first, cowboy second. And what you got to know is that the horse is what keeps your feet off the ground. And if you're a foot, you're now a farmer, you're not a cowboy. So the horse is the one thing that you better take really good care of and never betray it. Horse first means that if it needs water, it gets water then you get a drink of water. It's the end of the day and it's time to eat. Horse gets fed, turned out, then you go eat. You don't do like you see in the movies where they time the saloon all night. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen on a ranch. Horses are very well taken care of because if you don't, once again, you've just betrayed the most sensitive animal in the world. That's the first thing you did wrong. Second one is you're not gonna be on a ranch very long because if you can't take care of your horse, then nobody's gonna trust you. And once again, it goes right back to respect. If you don't respect that animal, there's no cowboy in the world that's going to respect you. Because that horse is very important to him. That horse might mean the difference between life and death. If he comes up crippled, there might be a long ways to walk carrying that saddle to find the camp. And so he better make sure that that horse is well taken care of, brushed, fed, before he finds a place that's dry for himself to sit down and try and get a couple hours sleep. Because without that horse, he's nothing. Another one of the laws or the code of the West is that when the boss takes his rope down, you better take yours down. And what that means is that you don't take things lightly when you're cowboying. And when you see a situation where you're trailing cattle, for example, or crossing a bridge and some cow keeps cutting back and the boss is up there and you see him unsnap his rope off his saddle, that means you better get to unsnapping your rope because he's about to rope it. As long as he works for his employer, he's going to ride for the brand. He's going to do what his employer wants done. Because if he doesn't do his best to do what he was hired to do, why, that's just the same as stealing. And it's the same thing in, as you can imagine in any kind of situation. He leads, you follow. That's, what, that's how much trust you have in him. Well, okay. Responsibility and authority are exactly even in the cowboy world. Well, his responsibility is to the cattle and the men, and my responsibility is to ride for the iron. 
Well, if the boss does something, I'm going to follow him. I'll follow him to hell and back if I need to. Well, that's why he's the boss. And that's what that means. Take some time to make the moment last. You can juggle each hour like a circus clown. But sooner or later, you've got to slow down. No, most people in the Old West, they, uh, they wouldn't even ask about a man's past because that's his business. In fact, you never ask a man about his past. And in fact, there's parts of the country, you know, you, you won't believe it, but there's parts of the country where you don't ask a man his last name. If they want to share with you, that's one thing, but you don't, you don't pry into people's business. Fill out an employment form. Boy, that sure wouldn't work from the Old West. You know, you look at a man and you offer him a job, you expect that he's going to do the best job that he can, ride for the brand. It doesn't matter if he's a murderer or, or what he is, it's none of your business. If the law hasn't caught him, it's none of your business. If he does something in front of you, against you, then it becomes your business. But there's no sense in asking about your past. The past is past. The future's where we're living. And also, like a lot of people come from town, they come out on a man's ranch, the first thing they say is, how many cows you got? How many acres you got? That is one of the rudest things that you can possibly say to a rancher. Well, a rancher's typical answer, when you ask him how many cows he's got, they'll say, well, I probably got just enough to eat the grass. Then you say, well, how many acres you got? He oh, just probably enough grass to feed the cows. And what he's telling you is, it's none of your business. So you don't ask personal questions like that because you got to understand that a ranch, the cow inventory, is a rancher's bank account. And I would never ask another guy how much money he's got in the bank. And that's what that means. That's why ranchers are kind of closed mouth about things because it's nobody's business. Well, if you want an inside tip, all you got to do is see his bull pasture, count the bulls. The ratio is 1 to 25 and you can do the math you know how many cows he's got. <laughs> <laughs> that's all there is today. And that's the story. <laughs> I hate it when people ask me that. The code of the west of the 1800s, of the cowboys out on the Great Plains, has to do with how we live today because it's how a man feels in his heart that's right and how he feels is wrong. All my life I wanted to be a cowboy and I got the opportunity to do that. Had I not followed the code of the West, I wouldn't be here right now. I've met a lot of people in my life. I've met at some pretty high rollers. I've met people everywhere I go and I love to visit and we get to visit and a whole lot of people always wanted to do what I do, but I've never wanted to do what anybody I've ever met does. And that's always kind of kind of tickled me because I was lucky enough to get to do my passion. I get to work with the most sensitive animal on the planet. And the people that I call friends are real friends. And uh, of course, most of my friends are cowboys because that's the circle I was in. But it's, uh, it's a fact that the code of the West is alive. And it will remain alive as long as there's people eating hamburgers because there's going to be cowboys. There you go. In my life, I mean, I'm over 60 years old and I've done a lot of things, some of which I'm proud of. Um, at this final stage, I think probably in all these 60 years, if, if I could convey to any, anything that I have, have over my lifetime, is be honest. And the Code of the West is certainly a a good thing to have as a as a guideline. It's worked for thousands of years, really. And it's something that has to be taught. It has to be learned. Be true to yourself and be truthful to others. In this day and age, we go too fast. In the good old days, we know we're past. But if we ease on our brakes, can we erase our mistakes and enjoy our repast at last? Well, the speed's not the question. We'll concede it's the wrong direction. Let's turn on our tail and take the back trail, make that one correction. 
Still, a slower rate seems fair. I, I really hate to tear. We won't go as far if we leave our motor car, but just smell that country air. That aroma I smell so sweet. It's easy to tell us mesquite. Now you'll say I'm bragging, but I'll lay that's a chuck wagon, and it's dang near time to eat. Taters and gravy and pot roast and beans, sourdough biscuits and peaches and greens. This grub's the best anywhere in the West, so sit back and loosen your jeans. I've got my pack, of course. It's on the back of my horse. With friends I can count on and exaggerations we expound on. I'm a chuck wagon trailer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is that true? Good, strong love kind that helps you rise above Keeps your feet firm on the ground Good, strong love Racing to the mark with my clenched fists But the target should be my love's warm kiss